Chapter 1 A.G. Wolf of the Ninth Avenue A wire-framed T-Rex runs. A Tyrannosaurus Rex. A carnivorous reptile that reigned over the land of the Cretaceous period about 67 million years ago. The largest was 13 meters long and weighed 9 tons. It's a dinosaur. But it is a bit different from the fossil-based scientists' imaginings. It is much smaller than the T-Rex, and yet its forelegs are remarkably developed, and its three claws are sharp enough to crunch the flesh of its prey. Tyrannomon, mature, dinosaur type, data species. Its wireframe 3D body is covered with skin textures and mapped to bring about additional texture. Red, T-Rex-like creatures run. They were herding together. One chasing prey, one stalking, one waiting. A coordinated group hunt based on advanced intelligence. Their prey is trapped. They drive it deeper and deeper into the tunnel. When the claws of the approaching Tyrannomon finally catch its prey. Pow! Roar! With an ear-splitting roar, a huge square object passes by at breakneck speed. It's a subway, a wireframe train. All that the Tyrannomon dodging the train can see is Vermilimon, the color of the line that marks the route. On the destination display, there's a mysterious string of characters that looks familiar but is in an unknown language. It's not an ancient jungle, but a concrete underground space constructed with line drawings. The three Tyrannomon once again resume their chase after their escaping prey. They turn off at a branch in the tunnel and go deeper underground. Splash! The sound of a foot in water. The end of the road leads to a vast sewer system. The area is so dark that not even the tips of their outstretched fingers can be seen, but the Tyrannomon are aware of their surroundings. The smell of filth from the stagnant winds, the footsteps of prey fleeing through the canal. In other words, the very air around them. Grr! The Tyrannomon lying in wait screams. Suddenly, a tornado forms, and the resulting whirlpool of water columns send the Tyrannomon flying. The off-balance Tyrannomon falls backward into the waterway, its belly exposed. Foosh! A follow-up shockwave from close range delivers a powerful but unexpected finishing blow. The Tyrannomon is silenced by its prey's counterattack, and the wound on its red skin the noise continues to spread. A pop-up billboard, a 3D digital signage advertisement, a kabuki-like store mascot with a strong kabuki accent, wearing a black bear on its face, is advertising a new burger with four times more meat than any other burger on the market. I wonder if there are no good part-time jobs to be had. Eiji Nagasumi takes a seat on the second floor of the fast food restaurant and lingers around with a drink he got with a coupon. With smartphone in hand, he skims through the topics on the social networking site, Grimm. Grimm is a pan-global communication tool. In addition to the basic short message, voice chat, video, and live streaming functions, there are various communities based on group channels. The total number of users is probably the highest among all social networking sites. The most distinctive feature is that it also serves as a financial tool using the proprietary cryptocurrency, DC, or Digicoin, forming a single economic zone. However, it's also half illegal. Grim is a must for freelancers like AG, who are looking to make money as it serves as a venue for information gathering, private sales, and crowdsourcing. Grimm is essentially a networked republic based on a new set of values, so to speak. The scale of its economy is such that it now threatens the real world's major powers. The hurdle for a breeder is a high one. 
I guess that capturing collectors is the quickest and easiest way to make money. But if you want to be a full-time hunter, you need to have a sales channel with customers. A black Agumon? 100 million DC for the capture. AG decides to go for it. Agumon is the name of a type of data traded by codecrackers like AG who frequent Grimm, a network of undocumented workers. Agumon, black, must be an intact organism. The dinosaur-shaped silhouette is accompanied by a description and a note about the recruitment. 100 million DC is more than 100 million yen, right? That's more money than AG can imagine, probably enough for him to live for 10 years without working. However, when he looks at the replies to his original comment, he immediately gets worked up. All of them are either abusive, prankish, or just begging for money. Grim is a lawless place. It's the network equivalent of a dumpster fire. Ah, uh, maybe this is some kind of urban legend. 100 million isn't realistic, and if it were black, it wouldn't be an Agumon. Ah, uh, my Tyrannomon number three! He unintentionally raises his voice. A group of high school students on the same floor glance at Eiji. Until last year, Eiji, like them, is wearing his high school uniform. They are chatting amongst themselves, enjoying their days with no goals, no worries about the future, and no real sense of purpose. Eiji stops swiping his phone and touches another gadget on the table with his other hand. It is palm-sized, with a monochrome LCD screen and control buttons. At first glance, it looks like an electronic toy. On the screen is a so-called dot image of a deformed, dinosaur-like creature. Tyrannomon. That's the name that's displayed. But this one has fallen and has an X in its eyes. I was so busy looking for a part-time job that I blew all my money on it! Stupid, stupid, stupid! AG hits his own head repeatedly. The other two Tyrannomon, number one and number two, look at him from the tiny black and white screen, one after the other. They look troubled, as if they're waiting for instructions. You can do it, because I can't afford to lose anymore. AG operates the gadget and replaces the down Tyrannomon with another one. If you can't capture the target, no food for you. Or rather, if you don't capture it, no food for me for a month. They all seem to think him strange for being so excited about the game. The high school students raise their eyebrows and shift in their seats. But this isn't a game. It's not a form of play. AG is a code cracker. A hacker is a person who possesses outstanding computer-related skills. Code crackers are hackers who are willing to engage in illegal and gray area activities. Tool settings? Capture! Reassign target to Madoki Betamon. You'll pay for underestimating A.G. Nagasumi, aka Cracker Fang. Execute command, and go! With a click, he presses the execute button. The Tyrannomon on the monochrome LCD screen disappears somewhere. They've got a job to do. The AI will capture the prey as specified by the tool. After downing the drink in the paper cup, AG begins to read Grimm again. Tokyo University of Electrical and Computer Engineering was established as a major government program to favor and support science students who will be responsible for the future of science, technology, and the nation itself. Although relatively new, it boasts top-class research and is responsible for great strides in the field of information engineering. It's located in the Denrin district, which has become a new center of the multinational city of Tokyo. The university's reputation as a good starting point for work with global companies and so-called big tech companies has made it increasingly popular with prospective students. Adjacent to the Denrin campus, there is another facility, Abaddon Electronics Corporation. 
AE is a leading company involved in electronic terminals, network equipment, and fabless semiconductors. The Abaddon Electronics Digital Lab, DDL, was AE's research and development center. The first floor lobby of DDL is simpler than AG ever imagined. It is nothing but a reception desk and a run-of-the-mill waiting bench. The large display on the wall is not only advertising AE, it's also showing prairies, dense forests, polar seas, mountain ranges, rapids with autumn leaves, underground caves, and environmental images of nature from each of the four seasons. The Digital Lab is a research facility. AE's headquarters is elsewhere. The exterior walls of the gently curved lab are greened, and there is no company logo or recognizable signage. Anyone passing by might think it to be the building of the University of Electrocommunications next door. AG looks at his reflection in the glass. He is dressed in his usual casual attire. Casual attire is apparently allowed at DDL. The people who work here are supposed to be the elite with the very best minds in the field. A freelancer with a high school diploma would be out of place. But A.G. walked to the reception desk without any hesitation, because he's here to work. Hello there! A.G. starts with a greeting. It's directed at the receptionist. Huh? What's with this suspicious looking kid? She looks at A.G. as if she's not sure what to make of him. He's not wearing a square backpack, so it should be obvious this isn't a food delivery. Ah, well, perhaps there are occasional college students or passers-by who mistakenly enter the lab. Maybe he's being mistaken for one of them. I have an appointment. Do you mind if I type it into this tablet? A research facility is bound to have trade secrets. There are several strong guards at the gate on the other side. If this were the United States, they would be carrying handguns. Yes, okay then? Her voice is cute too. She has short, voluminous hair that is tucked in at the collar. While her style is plain, like you'd expect of someone who works at a lab, she has a small face and a slender neck and shoulders. Is that your real name? I tend to use an alias when at work. Excuse me, but are you in a show business? Or a writer? Neither. It's not a stage name or a pen name. AG, like most code crackers, uses his street name when at work. AG Nagasumi. Is phone number, appointment time, and reason for the meeting enough? Hatsune? AG takes a look at her nameplate. Please don't get all casual on me. Okay, Hatsune. <laughs> Hatsune, the receptionist, twitched her temples. If you're here on business, put your company's name here. I don't have a company yet. Ugh. Well, my occupation is... What was that guy's department again? Ah, oh, this is such a pain in the neck. AG takes out a smartphone. Tomonori Ryusenji, professor. Tapping the address, he sends an I'm here message and decides to wait in the lobby. There are several other guests waiting. They all received guest passes from reception. They all look more like academics than businessmen, as if they are attending a university of computer science. AG looks at the object in the center of the lobby. Three spheres floating in the air. Each sphere has a distinctive mark engraved on it. They are in a circle, more or less. They are rotating, overlapping each other. They were like three globular clusters gravitationally pulling each other in space. Were these here before? A closer look leaves A.G. astonished. This three-dimensional image is a hololize. Hey, Fang. A voice calls out his codecracker name from the other side of the gate. At the same time, the three objects collapse and disappear without a trace. A.G. turns around. His height is about 170 centimeters. He's a chiseled man with a bit of gray and a slight Caucasian look to him. He must be in his 60s, but his gait and posture are good, 
making him appear much younger. His presence is more apparent in the reactions of those around him than in the man himself. Everyone in the lobby takes notice of his unexpected appearance. Hello, Professor Ryusenji! He is one of the co-founders of Aberdeen Electronics. He is extremely wealthy. He still owns more than 20% of the shares of AE, which has a market capitalization of more than 100 billion. He also happens to be a university professor. He is the boss of Ryusenji Laboratory, which is well known in the industry, and is currently a professor emeritus at the Tokyo University of Electrical and Computer Engineering. As one of the top executives of his company, he has built it into a world-class company in the past 10 to 20 years. This is my first time meeting Cracker Fang, but it certainly doesn't feel that way. I suppose you could call him a man from above the clouds. In normal circumstances, Ryusenji is not a person with whom Eiji would feel at ease. Because we're always talking over voicemail, yes, it's me, Eiji Nagasumi. Eiji introduces himself again. Well, Fang, or Eiji, let's get going. Sorry for all the trouble we put you through. Which reminds me, I'll get you a guest pass. Ryusenji goes to the reception. The suspicious kid has so casually invited the de facto boss of Japan AE that the receptionist, Hatsune, has become a little nervous and increasingly suspicious. Yes sir, right away. I'm going to D4 and need a co-researcher. Huh? The board has given its approval. Just this morning. Oh, okay. Understood. Hatsune is surprised twice as she taps the terminal to confirm and issue the pass. For the first time, he holds up the special pass he has been issued and walks through the detection gate with a guard standing by, saluting him. Just by doing so, Eiji feels a little more mature. As they walk down the corridor, employees and researchers passing by greet Ryusenji. Eiji stands behind him scurrying around and returning their smiles. For whatever reason, it's a great feeling. Professor Ryusenji? Why are you called Professor? Why not the President, Vice President, or Chairman of the Board? Probably because Professor is what describes me best. Being a researcher apparently suits him. He's already left the management of AE to his former subordinates. Eiji is not sure how to deal with the management of a large company, but he is somewhat more comfortable talking to a university professor. Before we go to the office, there is something I would like to see. I'd like you to take a look at it too. I wonder what it could be. I can hardly wait. This way. They take the elevator to the next floor, where they are met by another guarded gate. It's not the airport-style detection gate in the lobby, it's a bulkhead. The area ahead seems to be completely isolated from the rest of the DDL building, the D4 compartment. This is Abaddon Electronics' top secret. The core research that will determine the future of our company is being conducted here. Ryusenji explains its importance. The core of DDL AE's state-of-the-art research facility is in D4. AG is forced to leave his phone and personal belongings in the hands of a security guard. He is also subjected to a rigorous body check. What is it? Ryusenji, who passed through the bulkhead gate earlier, looks back at AG. Um, I'm not sure I'm ready. What? It's just an experience is all. Are you not into attractions? Huh? You mean the fun kind? Well, it's not like we're genetically engineering dinosaurs or researching the zombie virus. Thought that would be pretty interesting. <laughs> Relaxed by Ryusenji's joke, Eiji passes through the D4 gate. And inside is...